very honored to have you here, Sharon Rostov the Mayor. I'm honored to be with you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a lovely time for, for us to do a wonderful concert this morning together in Tel Aviv Museum. Totally, in this hot weather, <laughs> yes. unexpected summer in the middle of spring. That's true, March, <laughs> the beginning of March, and we're here. And, and I friend. understand that this morning we're doing something different. I'm going to interview you. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And uh, I'm surprised when I'm uh, going with you. I wanted to ask you, Orit, uh, what do you think is uh, unique about your concert series? Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, it was a dream for me to do it. Um, and I feel that I'm fulfilling my dream year by year. And the idea is to make something that very applicable to lots of uh, large variety of audience. We have different audience, the young generation come and connect to classical music in a very uh, different way, in a much more humorous way, non-formal non way, to make music and the stories behind the music be uh, part of our lives. It's not um, formal and uh, square concert series that belongs to the past and the conservative generation. No, we're trying to bring the music alive um, by, by making it live, by bringing the best uh, artists like you, Sharon. And it's the first time for us together to play, and I'm very, very uh, privileged that you're here with us. And I am privileged. <laughs> I'm privileged to work with uh, such a, an amazing pianist and an artist like you, and yeah. I'm very vice honored. Versa. Vice versa. It's, uh, to play with you is really to touch the emotion and the heart, and not just making music. And also the process we see of making music in the rehearsals and learning about the music and learning about the, the being behind the music was just an experience for me. Very, very special. For me, singing is pure emotion. The, I think the highest, the highest point for a singer is to stop worrying about the note and the production of the note and to transform into a sheer emotion that, that, that is transformed to the audience. I believe that's, you know, the highest point of singing. And uh, I'm very, very, very lucky to have you with the same kind of emotion on the keyboard because, as you know, a singer cannot do it alone. Thank you. Well, with you, I think you can do it alone. It's so beautiful. <laughs> but it's, it's special to do it together, I agree. And, and is it a dream that you had from a very young age to become a singer? Did you have it from early childhood? I think that... Uh, I realized that I have to be a singer when I was 16. Um, I saw a picture of uh, Midi Mesplé, who was a French coloratura from the beginning of the previous century, uh, singing Lacme, and she was wearing next to nothing. <laughs> and I thought, that's really interesting, um, <clears throat> you know, to, to become a character with your voice. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that was my calling. And I've since then changed my calling many times, but I still believe that singing, especially operatic classical singing, is the highest form of expression that, that exists. You have a very, you have a very versatile um, experience in music making. You're a great opera singer, You've performed in all the major opera halls in, in Europe and New York. You have a uh, great experience playing with Colt Mazur and Zubin Mehta. Uh, you're also a great teacher, teaching in the... Um, Buchmann Meta School for the Arts in Tel Aviv University. What is it that you give uh, the young generation, the artists that you teach, uh, a cement mantra for life? What is it that you want to bring them about with? Oh, there isn't one mantra, there are many, because uh, just the process of learning vocal technique is such a hard and painstaking process. I guess I teach them uh, to be patient with little steps. Uh, I teach them to stay modest, stay true to their art, stay true to the art. If you're singing Mozart, if you're singing Brahms, if you're singing Schubert, you're not singing you. You are singing it. And to transform themselves from me, 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 to an artist that is there that can give. And I all the time tell them, when you are on stage, you are not singing for you. You're not singing for your ego. You have to sing for your audience or you're not doing your job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that my, my main uh, calling is to produce exquisite, perfect, determined and uh, artists, but to, to keep them with their feet on the ground 
uh, having a having a career today in the classical field is one of the hardest things. And if they don't excel, if they're not excellent as people, they cannot. They will not make it because egos, egos are, you know, they disappear. Oh, it's amazing to hear it. But you know, it's a challenge because you're yourself. You're the body and the mind and the soul. For me, coming to a piano and having a Stanway, it's so easy. I don't, I don't walk with my instrument, but you carry your instrument within you, both physically and mentally. How is it to cope with having your own body within, within it's yourself? It's terrible. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it cheated you, it betrays you at times, isn't it? It's terrible to be a singer, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I'm very fortunate to not worry about it anymore because I feel very fulfilled. But I see what the students go through, and you know, the, I, I don't want to really explain now in this video what it means to be a singer. You know, if you wake up with the wrong kind of body things, fluids <laughs> in your body, it's, it's terrible. It's like, you know, really winning, not just the art, it's winning over your body. Mm -hmm. so. So we are very lucky today that all is well and you are with us here. Foot, foot, foot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have an amazing concert with the French chanson and Forêt and Du yeah. Parc, and I yeah. can't wait. I'm very, I'm very fortunate that I can sing the classical and then transform and have a slight schizophrenia and then sing French chanson with you and great Adam, who is a great artist. Adam Ben, Az ben Ezra. Everybody remember this name. Yes. Let's have Adam with us right now. Adam, Adam come, come, come here. <laughs> yeah. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. So great to have you with us today. <laughs> the men between us. Thank you. And we're very, very privileged to have you uh, as our jazz bass player. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's very special because you started to play the violin as a young kid, and, and you only uh, started the bass at the age of, uh, I think, like, like, like Sharon. She started to think about singing professionally at the age of 16, and so do you. Um, what is it that you have with the bass? Why did you choose this instrument? Uh, I like I, I like the sound. It's, uh, it feels amazing, uh, the, uh, and I, and I like to comp uh, other uh, accompany, accompany, accompany other singer and, and to support them. Uh, you know, it's very special to watch you playing because you actually hug the instrument, you caress it, you kiss it almost. You you make love with the instrument. Completely, isn't it? <laughs> we fell in love both with you and your yes. bass. We, we can't do anything, we're just watching you. It's like, oh my God, what is he doing? Yeah, the music so huge, moves, moves my body naturally. It's, so. it's very different playing than other brace players. How did you come along to, to make this so special style of your own? Uh, I was inspired by uh, Avishai Cohen, mm -hmm. who's a drummer, he's a bass also. And I uh, tried to, to figure out uh, how to make other sounds and other rhythm, rhythm from uh, the instrument, and I uh, explored the, the different uh, spots on the, of the wood, and uh, it becomes what uh, it becomes. Great, wonderful. So we're looking forward to the concert together, and thank you very I'm much to be with us. Thanks. Adam, Sharon Rostov, Adam Benezla, we'll have a great time together. Thank you.